everybody. Welcome back to Sassy Gal Prepping and welcome back to Sassy Saturdays. And today I'm real sassy, y'all, because we are going to be talking about medical bias. Okay. That was in the title and you saw on the thumbnail, medical bias and how we can be better prepared to protect ourselves in uh, medical healthcare settings. We need to be prepared for how to help ourselves when it comes to uh, taking care of our health, advocating for ourselves if we have to, um, and, and just doing some things ahead of time to to help this, uh, to, to keep this from happening. My friend Kim sent me a TikTok video, and uh, this video was a um, of a of a uh, woman sharing the story of of another woman in the news. Her name is Lisa Edwards. I listened to an interview with Lisa's um, son and daughter in law. They were talking to WATE uh, TV. They had come out and they had seen body cam footage from the police that were involved in this incident. Um, they there's a there's a whole timeline out there of of, of how this kind of came to be, but this, but Lisa Edwards, Miss Edwards was coming, was relocating to Tennessee. So she had been on a plane. She had complained of stomach issues. She got off the plane and they, they sent her to a hospital. I don't know the details, but she was sent from that hospital to another hospital, but I don't know again, if that was of her own accord or, or if the hospital sent her. So um, I'm reading here. I did, I decided I did not share this tab on my screen. So if you just forgive me, if I'm looking off, I'm going to be reading. Um, but on February 5th, she was discharged from Fort Sanders regional medical center, but she refused to leave the hospital. And according to the release from the DA's office, um, Fort Sanders Regional Medical Center security officers, they issued her a trespass warning for disruptive behavior and trespassing. And then they called the Knoxville Police Department. And so a spokesman for the Knoxville Police Department said that around 740 a.m., Officers were dispatched to the medical center and the security officers told the police officers that Edwards had been evaluated, discharged, and was refusing to leave. After officers asked Edwards to leave and she repeatedly refused, they decided to arrest her for trespassing. According to Knoxville police, Edwards, Ms. Ms. Edwards was not handcuffed and she was placed in the back of a police cruiser. The DA's release stated that officers called for a transportation wagon to take Edwards, but they were unable to load her into the wagon because of her mobility issues. The DA's release said that when she was being taken to the detention facility because she was being arrested, the officer transporting her stopped to deal with another motorist and then noticed that she had become unresponsive in the back. And when they noticed he, that she was unresponsive, he called for an ambulance. And that, um, and the ambulance took Ms. Edwards back to the Fort Sanders Medical Center, and she was placed on life support. She did eventually die. Now, when you, when you when you hear things like um, from the report, they were unable to load her into the wagon because of her mobility issues. She had mobility issues because she had a stroke in 2019, and that left her with mobility issues and speech issues. Cognitively, she was fine. She could make decisions on her own and things like that, but she had problems. Okay. She had mobility issues. So she was unable to actually really walk. Okay. Did the police officers know that she had a stroke? No, because they didn't bother to go inside and actually check on the problems if she was actually having problems. None of this information in the report mentions that Ms. Edwards was having problems breathing. She was having problems talking. She was having problems. And apparently she was having these problems because she was having many strokes because she eventually died of a stroke. So do I have a problem with the way the police treated her? You betcha. You hear one police officer say, oh yeah, I'm upset. My uniform's all nasty now. So apparently they were upset because she smelled 
Um, she's overweight, obese, maybe she couldn't talk very well. They obviously had preconceived ideas about her because of what was in her purse. They were trying to find, I guess she had an inhaler, but the medicine part of the inhaler was missing. Um, but she, and she had cigarettes in there. So they made comments about that, about her health. She had problems breathing, but Oh, she's got 17 packs of cigarettes. There were only two. I saw when they were pulling out stuff, um, from her purse, they used a phrase of like, well, we could just throw her in the cruiser. Um, another one, um, in the video later, it said that they would stuff you. I'm going to stuff you in there. If you don't get in there, they kept accusing her of, of making it up that it was all, you know, an act. So let me just, I'll just play some stuff here for you. So you can see. I'm thinking, uh, just leave her on the sidewalk and I'll wipe blanket over and everybody can go about their day. How about that? I will just, uh, leave her on the sidewalk. And with a white blanket on her, and everyone can go on about their day. All right, how about this one? Need some fire is what I need. Want to spray on too? Yes. Make no sense, dude. You guys want some lights? No, I've got some. I got Hawaiian lights off. I need some. I need some lights. You know what they're doing there? They're spraying Lysol on each other after handling her she's in the police cruiser at this point and after handling her and dealing with her they're spraying each other with lysol and then one man said he was going to go get some wipes so he can wipe down some of his uh things on his uniform all right so how about this one she she's been dismissed from the hospital this is all act. yeah this is all act she's been this she has been discharged. Okay, here they say that this is all an act, okay? She's been discharged from the hospital. This is all an act. Uh, this is called ascertainment bias, where you see what you expect to see based on prior expectations, okay? As if like, like, oh, I've seen it all. I know what's happening here, okay? And so an example would be like a homeless patient with past drug abuse and is, um, and is found unconscious and it's assumed that he OD'd when in fact he has hypoglycemia. Okay. So here in, in this case with Miss Edwards, they're seeing something, they're expecting it, you know, based on, based on prior experiences, prior expectations, they're like, okay, it's all an act. You've been doing this. So everything they've been doing from this point on is with that bias. Here's another one. This one burns my biscuits y'all. And I, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I'm not doing this with you. Okay. This is the I Lord's, listen to me. This is the Lord's day. All I want to do is give me some coffee and some oatmeal. I'm yeah. not going to deal with your mess this morning. We've already spent too much time on you. You're going to get up here in this van and you're going to go to jail. We're done with this. And I'm tired of this dead weight crap. No. This is, this is the Lord's day. O-M-G. Are you kidding me? He has the gall to say, this is the Lord's day. I am not going to deal with you. you know, I just want to get my coffee and some oatmeal. Are you kidding me? I am. I was appalled when I heard this. I lost it. I was just like, I'm done with all of this. I have, you know, and that's when I decided to do this, this, this video because this crap, this kind of crap really does go on. And this is just the police not even talking about what's going on in the hospital. All right. So I'm going to show you one more have an inhaler uh -huh. okay so listen this is going to be your option uh -huh. you're going to get up and you're going to sit here uh -huh. i'm going to stuff you in the floor uh -huh. so which one do you want it to be uh -huh. i'm leaving it up to you you either get uh -huh. your butt up here or you're going to have your head there and your feet here and we're going to close the door uh -huh. and you're going to drive to jail oh, like that my blood here oh my god you guys can't do this to me i'm going to stuff you in here She's saying she can't breathe. She's having issues right there already. She can't barely talk. Okay. And so I'm not even going to bother showing you the rest of the video because I mean, it's up there. It's on YouTube. If you want, you can watch it and that's up to you. But I will tell you that, that it was, it was disgusting. They, they literally put her in the car. They didn't sit her up. 
they like th dragged her in there and she was kind of like laying, but I don't think she was actually on the seat because the, in the back of the cruiser, there's a camera that shows the, the back of the cruiser and you'd be able to see, you know, if you've got a prisoner or somebody back there, you'd be able to see them if they were sitting up, but you can't see her. And there's a few times you see her where she's trying to get herself up and she's saying, help me, help me. And then all you can hear in the video is her saying, I can't, you can't, She's saying she can't breathe. I need to get up. Please open the door. Right. But then she is um, she's on there and the guy. So the police officer is driving to the detention center. But on the way. Right. He hit. He uh, is dealing with another motorist and realizes that she's unresponsive during that time that he's driving. You hear her breath. Just she 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 is gasping for air. She didn't die in, in the car, but she could have already been. She it says she was put on life support when she got to the hospital. But he is still thinking when he gets to realize that she's unresponsive, and he opens the door, and he then he starts calling for help for someone for an ambulance to get her. Um, you know, he is trying to get her. He's saying, "Waking up, stop faking it." You know, he is still convinced that she's faking and putting on an act and he's trying to wake her up and she's not waking up. The bias I really want to talk about though, um, is the bias that is coming from healthcare professionals, doctors, nurses, um, other kinds of caregivers, hospice care, um, rehab care, anything like that. And what was going on with Miss Edwards and the police treating her, that is the same kind of thing that other people will that are that are nurses or some kind of caregivers for people. Um, they they treat them as if they are burdens. And I have to ask myself, why are you even in it? You know, why would you even be a nurse or any kind of a healthcare provider if you didn't care? You know. So other things that happen in the you know, in hospitals or in healthcare settings is that there's a lot of gaslighting patients and that is repeated denial of someone's reality in an attempt to invalidate or, or dismiss their symptoms, you know, so you're, so, you know, women, women have a lot of medical bias in this, um, in the healthcare system, because we will go in with, you know, a list of symptoms or things that we've been struggling with for a long time. And because the doctor can't figure it out, uh, they will tell us that it's all in our head or it's not that really big deal rather than working with us to try to point us into what, have you talked to this person? Have you considered this? There's supposed to be a team effort here between patient and doctor. Like I was telling in another video, another sassy Saturday video that I did is that, that you are the sovereign, your health is your responsibility. And so in there, you want to have in your healthcare uh, posse, you want to have people in there, certain people you might want to, you know, depending on what you have, you may need a chiropractor and then you'll have a dentist. I'm, I'm including that as along with health. You, you might have an endocrinologist, you might have, um, mental health, um, you know, therapists, things like that. And then you'll have your, maybe a general practitioner for women. You'll probably have an OBGYN. And so there's all these things that you'll have in your arsenal, different doctors that you'll see for different things. And so if someone is, is dismissive or they're invalidating things that you know that you have been experiencing for a long time. I want to encourage you to not doubt what you know that you are going through. Okay. Because that has happened. A lot of women will walk out of the office and they will say, Oh, well, maybe it's not as bad. And we end up dealing with our symptoms for a long time rather than getting the treatment that we deserve. So I encourage you don't doubt that keep asking questions, find the person that will work with you. Maybe it is time to switch doctor. Cause remember you are not a slave to the doctor. You know, they are there, they are practicing medicine. Okay. I know I said it that way for a reason. They are practicing medicine and they have a license to do so, but they, they are not the be all end all the know it all, but sometimes they have to research and do things just like we do. All right. So there is that, that does go on. That's gaslighting. And you know what? That is a form of emotional abuse. Okay. To dismiss someone and gaslight them and tell them they're tall in their head and they're really not experiencing things. That's a form of gaslighting. So patients need to know this. Doctors also need to know this is because you are re-abusing your patient by telling them that it's not really real. Okay. But yet this person knows they've been dealing with this for maybe five years and it took them all of the courage and to, to muster up to either finally pay attention to their health or come to you 
with questions and you're going to dismiss it. Doctors, please work with your patients and patients, please speak up to the doctors. There are actual studies that are that have been done. And so this one is implicit bias in healthcare professionals. And this is a systematic review. This is from Fitzgerald and Hearst, BMC Medical Ethics, produced March, or I'm sorry, published March 7, 2017. <laughs> I'll get it out here in a second. Okay, this is a research article. And I printed off some things that I wanted to just kind of highlight and share with you from, from their research. They searched for peer-reviewed articles published between March 1st, 2003, and the March 31st, 2013. So 10 years of peer-reviewed articles that they searched. All the studies that were investigated found a significant positive relationship between level of implicit bias and lower quality of care. It's there. Just that little bit of reading from that shows you that they found evidences and that it's there, you know, and so a patient should not expect to receive a lower standard of care because of their um, their race, their age, or any other characteristic. Okay. That's irrelevant. So this other thing says that the present of implicit biases among healthcare professionals and the effect on quality of clinical care is a cause for concern. And the following characteristics are at issue, race, ethnicity, gender, socioeconomic status, age, mental illness, weight, having AIDS, brain injured patients perceived to have contributed to their injury, uh, intravenous drug users, disability, and social circumstances. And in today's times, we also have to add in a group of people that have not followed the, the mainstream of people who have gotten a pokey poke. And that also might be a category at some point of medical biases. If you are, if you have not gotten that, then there will be bias and judgment towards you and how you're treated as well for that. So that's another category that didn't make it into this study, obviously, and it's coming. So what you want to do is to know your rights is first of all, we talk about the patient bill of rights, right? But you actually need to go state by state and probably even your County, I believe. So what you're going to want to do is you want to type in and search your state, which I did is like Virginia patient bill of rights. And what I found was that we have the code of Virginia titles, 37.2 behavioral health and developmental services. And it is protection, uh, chapter four protection of consumers. And so here's our code rights of individuals receiving services. And it says each Individual receiving services in a hospital, training for center, other facility, yada, 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 shall be assured his legal rights and care consistent with basic human dignity. Did Miss Edwards receive this um, at her hospital, you know, or both hospitals? Did she? I don't know. It sounds like she may have been evaluated and released and never really fully evaluated because probably someone didn't want to deal with her. So number three on the rights of indi individuals is be treated with dignity as a human being and be free from abuse or neglect. That's right there, right there. And you know what? Take this and put it in a folder. Okay. Make a folder. I have folders for different categories, but y'all, I have something here and it is, you see this? This is my binder. A lot of this I, I have just because I'm a homeschool mom and I have records in here for, can I say this, pokey poke exemptions. I have letters for that, letters of exemption for that. I also have studies from legal studies in here from legal cases. Um, I have forms for students attending colleges or universities regarding the C-19 pokey pokes. I have legal things in here about um, CDC, F on the FDA things about their court cases and court rulings. Um, I also have um, our executive orders law. I have some of these other law papers in here. I have things from the U.S. Food and Drug Administration about certain medical companies that have the pokey pokes, all right, and about how there are no fully approved pokey pokes in the USA. They are emergency use only, and you have the right to say no. I have a general letter on... Um, federal vaccine mandates. That was, I wrote to my legislator. Okay. These are, this is how serious I am y'all. Um, and then I have main, I have copies of forms and letters and stuff that I have in protective sheets here. Um, I also have biblical wisdom 
health, science, and vaccination. I have one of these things. It has all kinds of verses that support my beliefs. I have letters and memos from Liberty Council back here. Um, I also have um, stuff from the National Law Review about OSHA guidelines and employers. And a lot of this I did when my daughter was working and she, uh, they, her employer decided to um, implement a mandate, which mandates are not laws, decided to implement a mandate for a pokey poke or she would lose her job. So I went through and learned about what employees rights are. And that was, um, that was a seminar that I went to that I attended for, with uh, Peggy Hall, the healthy American. Um, and let's see, religious discrimination in the workplace. This was part of it. Uh, Virginia human rights act letters to the attorney general in Virginia. <laughs> Office of Civil Rights, because this is how I know how to, how to file. I had to know how to file for things. I also have one for patient rights from the Department of Health here in Virginia. Um, and so these are things that I suggest you put together in a folder that has documentations of what your rights are. And then take it with you. I, took, I take this everywhere. When I have to take one of my kids to the doctor, especially my minor, I have one minor child still, and I take this with me because if there's ever an issue, I can pull out a form. I can say, yeah, well, no, according to Virginia code, such and such, I can say no. Okay. I do not have to do that. And she does not have to do that. Some other things that you can remember to do is to document everything. It always helps the doctor if you can give them the most information as to when it started, how long how long has it been going on? You know, you're jotting down your symptoms, you know, what you're eating, the length of, of whatever's been going on and all of these things. Just keep track of everything. If you're just going in and saying, you know, my chest hurts, it's going to be this back and forth. Try to provide as much history for them as possible. Ask open-ended questions. For example, can you help me understand X. What is this thing on this forum? What does this mean? What does that mean? You're prescribing this medication. What does this do? How does it actually work in my body? Ask for time. Ask to make another appointment to specifically talk about X. Okay. Bring someone with you. When you go to the doctor, it's always helpful to bring someone with you. I have heard a lot of women either take their spouse, their husband, um, or they'll take someone else because having someone else there will, um, allow you to, um, kind of one, be validated because this person has witnessed your symptoms and two, they might be able to ask questions or they might hear something that you didn't pick up on, or they would ask the question that you didn't think about and then be honest and accurate. So for example, if your doctor's asking you about your diet, because you're having hypertension or, 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 you know, or anxiety or something, and they ask you about coffee, well, how much do you have a day? Well, I have one cup. <laughs> This is probably four cups. I don't know. This is like a bowl. Okay. Um, you know, tell them, you know, like, well, yeah, I have a really big mug every day and I have four of them, or I drank a whole pot by myself. I used to be that person. I used to drink a whole pot a day by myself. It's important. If you care about your health and you want to help them help you, you need to be telling them everything. You have to be proactive in your care. Remember that you are in control. Okay. Of the, of, of of everything. And the more info that you have from your state and whatever federal laws there are, um, the more you can print out and put in a folder, the more you can arm yourself with your rights as an individual, but also your rights and what you can expect from the hospital and, and what they can expect from you. And, and, and always ask questions. There should be well-informed consent for everything. And when I think back to Miss Edwards, kind of rounding this out here to the end, I really wish that there was someone there to advocate for her. She was all alone and she had to, to you know, she quickly deteriorated. And for the staff at the hospital to see, like they discharge her in the morning and then to see her come back a few hours later and she's on life support, I got to wonder if that would haunt somebody. Did someone see her in this morning and like you discharged her? I would love to know more follow up, which is I'm kind of following up on this, not trying to take too much time on it, but um, yeah, I would love to know more about this story. I know that the police that were involved are on leave. Um, they have not been criminally charged and I don't think that they have done anything criminally like what we've seen in other scenarios and other stories, if you know what I mean, about them actually doing anything. But you know what? Doing nothing is as bad as doing something. You know, the absence of helping her aided and, and actually 
made her condition worse. You know what I'm saying? So all I can say is that knowledge is power and you can arm yourself with some information. Okay. And also having your own, you know, having lists of your medications and all these kinds of things, but knowing what your rights are, knowing what you can do, what you can pursue. Okay. And having things like maybe even an advanced medical directive for yourself and um, for your family in the event that something happens and you can't speak for yourself and that you can carry these things with you. It's so, so, so important, especially in today's times that you are armed to protect yourself. Okay. And uh, so that was a reason why I did this video today. And I know it was a longer video. Anyway, I appreciate you and your time and your patience in this video. And I, I really wish you all the best and to, to be proactive in your health, y'all. Okay. It's really important. So I love y'all take care y'all stay sassy, but keep it classy. Mm -hmm.